Hey boys and girls, we're going to continue reading The World According to Humphrey. Today we will read chapter 9, which is called The Art of Self-Defense. Okay, I was having a great week, no doubt about it. <clears throat> Not only did I get the blue ribbon on Wednesday, but on Thursday the class got a long letter from Miss Mack. She included a, a picture of her standing by a waterfall next to some very strange looking creatures. They looked like hairy pigs or raccoony dogs. They are coates, Mrs. Brisbane said, reading from the letter, pronounced co a -tees. The coates looked weird. Miss Mack looked gorgeous, especially with all the red, yellow, and orange flowers surrounding her. How I wished I could be there with her, except maybe for the fact that those coates might not be hamster friendly. At the end of her letter, Miss Mack wrote, So farewell all my friends in room 26, especially the small one with the big heart, Humphrey. Sigh, sigh, sigh. Though she thought of... Though the thought of Miss Mack made me happy, the weekend was coming up soon and I always felt a little nervous about where I'd be spending it. When it was decided on Thursday that I was going home with Golden Miranda, I mean Miranda Golden, I was so excited I only got an 83% on my vocabulary test. Say I got 100%. I know because this time when Mrs. Brisbane asked who got 100%, she raised her hand. I always figured that Miranda lived in a castle because she reminded me of a fairy tale princess in disguise. Wherever it was, it had to be wonderful if Miranda lived there. Well, Miranda's home wasn't exactly a castle, but it was very tall. Miranda lived in a fourth floor apartment with her mom and her big dog, Clem. We had to take an elevator to get there. The apartment was nice. The mom was nice. Clem was not nice. Let me explain. Miranda had a small bedroom, and her mom let me stay there, right on the desk. To welcome me, the two of them did a complete clean-out of my cage. I'll bet nobody's done this for a while, said Miranda's mom, and she was right. Pretty soon, I felt like a brand-new hamster. Suddenly, Clem bounded into the room, a big mass of yellow fur poking his huge nose right up against my cage. His wet nostrils were like two eyes staring at me and he stuck out a giant tongue that came at me like a tidal wave. Luckily, the cage protected me. Mom, Miranda yelled, please get Clem out of here. Thank heavens Mom took Clem out for a walk in the park while Miranda showed me her room. She held pictures of her friends and family up to the cage so that I could see. Her dad, her stepmom, her grandparents in Florida. Next, she introduced me to her goldfish, Fanny. She wasn't much of a conversationalist. I squeaked, nice to meet you, Fanny, and she said, blub. I was thinking about how wonderful it would be to live with Miranda all the time when Clem returned from the park and galloped into the room. Clem, stay out, Miranda shouted, but Clem just wagged his tail and barked. Miranda closed the door so the dog had to stay outside, but we could still hear him whining and crying like a baby out in the hall. Still, just being with Miranda made everything seem golden until her mom called her to go shopping. Miranda protested, good girl, but mom didn't want her to stay inside on such a nice day. She had no choice unless she was rude to her mom, which Miranda never would be. I won't be gone long, Miranda told me, and I'll make sure the door is shut tightly so Clem can't get in. Everything would be all right, I assured myself. After all, Miranda had said so. I was all set to get in a good daytime snooze. But as soon as the door to the apartment closed, Clem started whining outside the room. I could hear his big paws up on the door trying to push it open. I was a little nervous, but Miranda had assured me I'd be all right. After all, she wouldn't be gone long. Then I heard it, the slight turning of the doorknob as Clem flung himself at the door repeatedly. What a barbarian he was. Suddenly, the door swung open and Clem burst in and ran straight to my cage. I tried to distract him by spinning on my wheel. I can do that for hours if necessary. I thought the spinning wheel might even hypnotize him like in an old movie I'd seen with Miss Mack. Miss Mack, where was she when I needed her? But apparently, all the spinning just excited Clem more. He started barking at me, but I couldn't understand a word he said. Now cut that out, I squeaked at him. That just seemed to make him more hot and bothered. He plopped his front paws up on the desk and stuck his nose against the cage near the lock. The lock that doesn't lock. 
Easy now, calm down, I squeaked through. I squeaked soothingly at the beast, but he kept poking his nose at the cage, showing me his huge tongue and huge teeth around it. Let me just say that Clem could stand some breath mints. He poked the lock again. I knew if he jiggled it enough, the door would swing open and I'd be history. Poor Miranda wouldn't know what, hap what had happened to me. She might even cry. I couldn't stand the thought of Miranda crying. I hopped back on my wheel and started spinning with all my might, hoping to buy some time. Clem pulled back for a moment and stared at the wheel going round and round. Let me just say, I'm glad that Clem is about two quarts low in the brain department. Woo, I'm a good spinner, but I was getting worried about how long I could keep it up when Golden Miranda rushed in. She never looked more beautiful to me than at that moment. Clem, stop it, she shouted in a very firm voice. Bad boy. Clem raced to her side, wagging his tail. Miranda's mom dragged old Clem out of the room and closed the door behind her. Woo! Miranda was very sorry. She opened up the cage and reached in to pick me up. Poor Humphrey, she said, hugging me. She set me on her desk and stroked me gently with one finger. I'm so sorry, Humphrey. So sorry. Oh, I don't know what felt better, the petting or Miranda's soothing words. Miranda felt so terrible about what had happened. She let me play on her desk. She lined up books all along the edges so that I wouldn't fall off. Then she let me wander around and see the sights. A desktop is a very interesting place, in case you've never explored one. Miranda's desktop had a big cup with hearts all over it. The cup was filled with pencils. Ah, pencils smell so sweet. She had a round silvery container of paper clips and a square purple container of rubber bands. She had lots of paper in a pink box, and she had a great big fat dictionary. I could really use one of those. I wonder if they make doll-sized dictionaries you can hide behind a hamster's mirror. Miranda giggled as she watched me check things out. When I tried to climb into the paper clip box, she stopped me with her finger. No, no, Humphrey, these would hurt you. She did the same thing when I tried to roll in the rubber band box. No, Humphrey, rubber bands can be rubber bands can be very dangerous, she told me. Well, I guess I knew that. Hadn't Garth shot a rubber band at AJ last week and almost got sent to the principal Morales' office? Hadn't AJ held his arm and said, ow, when a rubber band hit him? Anyway, I really enjoyed my time on the desk until I heard Clem barking. Then I made a beeline for home. Oh, Humphrey, I won't let Clem hurt you. Honest, Miranda assured me as she gently helped me back in my cage. I believed her. I really did. But when it was bedtime and Miranda's mom came into the room to say goodnight, she said some words that sent a chill up my spine. Don't forget, we're going to the Nicholson's house tomorrow night, Miranda protested. I hate to leave Humphrey. Clem gives him such a hard time. We'll lock the door this time, honey. He'll be okay, her mom said. And tonight, Clem will be in my room. After her mother left, Miranda assured me that Clem loves to sleep in my mom's room. But if anything happens and you get scared, just give me a squeak, she told me. Don't worry, I will, I assured her. I didn't sleep that night. For one thing, the stars on Miranda's ceiling glow in the dark and they're so beautiful I couldn't take my eyes off them. For another thing, well, I am nocturnal. But mainly I didn't sleep because I was worried about Clem. After my experience that afternoon, I believed that no lock could hold him back. And how could a little hamster fight back? What weapon would I have against a big, hairy, bad-breathed, small-brained creature? What weapon indeed? I had an idea. Clem hadn't made a peep for hours, so I took a chance and quietly opened the door that doesn't lock and dashed across the desktop to pick up my weapon, just in case of another encounter with Clem. I scampered back to the cage with it and quietly closed the door. I hid my weapon behind the mirror next to the notebook where no one could find it. Then I managed to get 40 winks or so of sleep around sunrise. Miranda and her mom kept Clem out of my sight all day until it was time for them to go to their party. I'm still worried, said Miranda. I'm locking your door with a key on the outside, her mom said. I'm locking Clem in my room, and Humphrey's cage is closed tightly, right? Miranda checked it. Everybody always checks it. It always seems like it's locked from the outside. It even makes a clicking sound. But from the inside, believe me, it's a piece of cake to open. 
Miranda seemed satisfied with the arrangement, but I wasn't, so I remained on high alert all that afternoon and evening. And here's what happened. After Miranda and her mom left, Clem barked for a while. Then I heard jiggling and joggling for about an hour. Next, I heard big hairy feet padding down the hall toward Miranda's room, toward my room. I sucked in my breath and waited. Yes, I knew Miranda's mom had locked the door with a key, but Clem didn't seem to let little things like that stand in his way. The doorknob squeaked and rattled. It twisted and turned. Nothing happened, but that didn't seem to bother Clem the Barbarian. He jiggled, rattled, and twisted it some more. When he got tired of that, he threw his whole body at the door, and then very slowly, the door opened. Clem actually seemed surprised, but I wasn't. I spent the last two hours carefully preparing for this moment. Not that my heart wasn't going thump, thump, thump very loudly. Even Fanny the fish seemed nervous. Clem trotted right up to the cage and stuck his big wet nose against it. Stay away! Keep your distance! I squeaked. I'm warning you. Clem wasn't discouraged one, but one bit. Woof! He barked, sending a foul cloud of doggy breath my way. I didn't even flinch. He barked a few more times and then began poking his big nose against the cage door. I wonder if he actually knew that the lock was broken. The time had arrived to put my plan into action. I was in grave danger and I had no choice. I would only have one chance at Clem because I only had one we weapon, a rubber band. It had taken me a long time to get it hooked around the edge of my food dish. Now I carefully pulled it back as far as I could, aiming directly at those big doggy nostrils. You asked for it, beast, I squeaked. Then I let loose. The rubber band snapped and sailed through the air, hitting Clem squarely on the nose. He yelped like a baby and raced out of the room as if he'd seen a ghost. Too bad I still I didn't still have my ghost costume. That would have been a nice touch. I guess Clem wasn't quite as dumb as I thought because he never even tried to come back into the room again. Of course, Miranda and her mom were really puzzled when they came home and found both bedrooms unlocked and Clem cowering under the living room sofa. I don't get it, said Miranda. Humphrey looks just fine. Maybe it was a burglar. But Miranda's mom checked the closets and drawers, and nothing was missing. Now that's a mystery, said Miranda's mother after she'd searched the whole apartment. Miranda stared at me, shaking her head. If only Humphrey could talk, she said. But I can if you just listen, I told her. I bet you'd have a lot to tell us, Miranda continued, not understanding my squeaks. Yes, I do, I thought. Enough to fill a book. That is the end of chapter 9.